Hello, my name is Aaron Lakota. I'm here in Jerry's Music Shop in South Hadley, Massachusetts. And in this video, I'm going to talk with you about uh, oboe reeds a little bit. Um, so the oboe reeds are probably the, you know, I would say the most important part of the instrument, the part that creates the sound. Without them, you don't get a sound. So I think it's worthwhile talking about them for a minute. So um, first of all, you, um, as I mentioned in an earlier video, we always want to take very great care to um, make sure we don't hit them on our teeth or our clothing. You, you would think even, you know, clothing probably wouldn't damage a reed, but even with clothing, if you catch it on your, your shirt or something, um, it will break. Um, also, you have to guard them from other students, um, other instrumentalists, because they really don't care about your reed as much as you do. So um, take care of that. So. Um, what I have here is I just have a little glass for soaking reeds. Um, you can use a, um, a prescription bottle or a um, film container or a little shot glass. Um, and what you want to do is just fill the, fill the glass um, you know, probably about um, even less than an inch with water. Basically what you want to do is you want to fully submerge the cane part of the reed. Okay, so let's just talk about what I mean by the cane part of the reed. If you look at the reed, there are basically, there's three parts to the reed. So you have this cork part or staple, and then you have the thread, and then you have the actual cane that you blow into. So the cane is actually the same type of cane uh, that's used in clarinet and saxophone reeds, um, but the process of making it's a little bit different. Now you've probably noticed by now that this is what's called a double reed. Um, what the double reed is, is basically two different blades blowing across each other. Um, so getting back to what I was saying about soaking the reeds, if you um, you want the cane part of the reed fully submerged. So you don't want to go up to the thread, okay? So you just want it up to the cane. Okay. And the water in the in the um, in the container should be warm. Um, Sometimes I will actually uh, soak a reed, an older reed, in really hot water, and that can sort of revitalize the reed. Um, but when you're just generally soaking, if you just wa use warm tap water, that's fine. Um, and my general rule with soaking reeds is if you submerge it in the water for one minute to three minutes, okay? So I think it really depends on the age of the reed. So an older reed sometimes takes longer to soak. Um, a, a brand new reed, you might not have to soak so long. So what you're looking for when you soak the reed is we want the reed to fully, fully open itself up. Okay, so as I mentioned, we have these two blades and we want them to have a nice um, sort of um, open aperture to them. Um, not too open though. Okay. So let's just talk about what, what, what to look for in reeds um, and what sort of makes a bad reed, when you should give up your reeds, um, when they're past their prime, if you will. Okay. So generally, a reed's going to last you, um, my rule of thumb is 10 to 15 hours of playing time. Okay, So that might not seem like a lot, and I guess it's really not a lot, but if you think of band class, you might be playing for a total of you know, 25 minutes of playing actual notes in band. You have a lot of rest, um, a lot of time is taken for you know, um, listening to other sections in the group. Okay, so, um, so a reed can last you if you figure that, and maybe you're practicing for an hour or a half hour a day, um, 10 minutes of that might be spent um, just getting ready, putting the instrument apart together um, and focusing on the music, okay? So um, generally you can get about two to three weeks out of a, of a reed if you're playing it regularly, if you take care of it, okay? So that's, a, that's key right there. You have to take care of the reeds, okay? So that means you have to make sure that they're in a reed case after you're done using them. Uh, means that you have to watch that you're not catching them on your clothes or your teeth when you're playing them and you have to make sure that nobody else is going to damage them as well. Okay. So one thing you want to be aware of is that when you buy reeds from a store you're going to most likely get them in these little tube cases. Um, so they come like this with a little top on them um, and there's just a little bit of cotton at the bottom. Okay. So you don't want to keep your reeds in these cases. So you want to buy a reed case, okay? There's a couple reasons you don't want to keep them in here. First of all, um, it's difficult to get them in there without hitting the tip of the reed, okay? Even if you hit it on this plastic, the reeds are delicate enough that, um, that they can break. So um, the other reason is 
that there aren't there isn't adequate ventilation in here. So if you keep them in here, the moisture from the reed is going to mold mold the reed. Okay, so you don't want a moldy reed. So wh what does a moldy reed look like? It's going to have sort of little black dots on it. Um, it might be a darker color. So be aware of those things. Um, don't play on a moldy reed. You might get sick. Um, and uh, keep your keep your eyes out for that. So um, while we're on the topic of reed cases, um, when you when you begin playing the reed, uh, the oboe, you're going to want to invest in a reed case. Okay. So um, there's a couple different types of reed cases. This is what we call a mandrel style uh, reed case. So what what you do is you put the reed on the mandrel there, and that holds it in place. Okay. So this pr particular reed case holds six reeds. Um, the other style of reed case, which I, which I'm using here, is called a uh, ribbon style. So if you if you see here, the reeds go in here and are held in place by this ribbon. So when picking a reed, um, you want a reed um, that crows a C natural. Okay. So what is the crow of the reed? Um, if you take the reed and put the reed into your mouth um, with correct support. Um, you're going to blow through the reed, and you're going to listen for the sound that it makes, okay? So again, we're going to put the reed up to the thread in our mouth. And then we're just going to blow. Okay, so you'll hear that there's an initial C that sings, and then as I blow, as I blow more air through the reed, there's another, uh, another sound that comes out, which is another C that's an octave uh, below. So that's what we want within the crow of the reed. Oftentimes you'll get student reeds that don't don't really meet that criteria. Okay, so I have a couple reeds soaked here that are student reeds, and you'll hear the difference in crow when I crow these. So, okay, so we have it's crowing below a B, and it's got a lot of rattle to it also. Okay, that's not necessarily um, a bad thing, but the reed needs a little bit of help to get into um, good. Um, to be a good playing reed, okay. So a few, uh, there's a few reasons that that could be. So if the reed's too wide open, if the aperture is too open, you might get that that deep rattling sound. Or if um, the uh, the cane needs to be displaced a little bit, okay. So I'll show you what that is too, okay. So to displace the cane, we're just going to we're just going to move one um, one side of the cane over the other. Okay, so generally it's going to be the, the side you're looking at is going to go to the right and the bottom side is going to go to the left. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm, if you look at my fingers, this, let's see, it's going to work this way. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm squeezing my fingers this way. Basically what I'm doing is trying to close up the inside of the reed. So that's going to raise the pitch of the reed. Okay, so think small instrument, higher sound. So you hear the big difference between when I blew into the reed uh, before and when I just did that. Okay, so oftentimes that's going to fix the reed that you buy in the store, you know, um, uh, depending on the quality. Um, but oftentimes just squeezing the reed down is going to make a big difference. So there's still a little bit of things in there. I'm picky. Um, you might not have to be so picky with it, but... So this is just a reed I just got from uh, the music store. So with this particular reed, I have to bite a little bit to get the pitch up. If I don't bite, it's a little bit uh, raucous and um, and low. So let me show you just a quick way that you can you can fix a lot of reeds that you buy in stores um, that might have that problem. So an easy adjustment that you can do to adjust um, with the reeds with simple uh, simple tools you might have at home. Um, I have these scissors. You can get them at any craft store. Um, and I'm telling you this tentatively, um, but you can clip the reed a little bit that's going to raise the pitch and focus the sound a little bit. Okay, so when I say a little bit, I'm talking um, a, just a hair off the tip. Okay, we'll get a close up of that. But just a very, very small part of the reed. And you can hear right away that that focused the sound a little bit, got the pitch of the reed up a little bit, and um, it doesn't have that raucous sound anymore. 
as I blow more, you can hear that the, the lower sound comes through. Don't be so concerned about that right now. The main goal for you at this point is to just have the reed crowing around the C, okay? It doesn't have to be a perfect C, but um, make sure it's not like a B flat or even a flat B, okay? And so that's crowing close to a C right there. Okay, so if you put that into the instrument, you should be able to get something you can work with. So it's it's workable. I'm still I'm still using a little bit too much uh, pressure with my lips, but um, there's a certain level of that that's acceptable. So let's say that the reed is a little bit too hard for you to blow. Okay, so there's too much resistance to it. What you can do is you can take a little bit of sandpaper, very light, very fine sandpaper, a, a thousand grit sandpaper, which you can get at automotive stores or in the automotive department at a lot of stores, and you're just going to lightly shave, uh, you're just going to lightly dust the reed. So I don't actually have any sandpaper with me, but we can use our imagination. So if we think that this is a sheet of sandpaper, you're just going to pull the reed along it this way. Okay, so don't go, don't go this way, never go that way, but away from the tip of the reed. And that's going to loosen the reed up a little bit for you. Make sure, again, make sure it's not just the standard wood sandpaper. It's got to be a very fine um, automotive sandpaper works well. That's what I find. So as I mentioned, um, a reed won't last forever, so please don't try to play it forever. Um, the reeds will, even if the reed looks like it's perfectly working fine, they'll reach a point where it just will stop, stop really functioning properly. It'll be too, uh, too easy to blow, and it'll feel, uh, I call them tissue paper reeds because it's sort of like playing a kazoo, okay? Um, as you get uh, more acquainted with the instrument, you'll know more of what that is. But just think that if you can't get any air through the reed anymore, it's time for the reed to, to go away, okay? So that's assuming that you've taken good care of the, the reed, okay? Oftentimes what will happen is you'll catch the reed on your tooth or on the clothing or uh, one of your friends in band will walk into it. So these things happen, so you have to take very good care of the reeds. I th think of them as your babies, okay? So um, to know if a reed is sort of past its prime when there's something that, that has happened to it, you can generally see that by visual. Uh, you can ge generally look at the reed and know that it's not good, okay? So it'll have chipped corners. It'll have, um, it'll have sort of um, indents in the tip of the reed. Um, it will have cracks in it, okay? So if your reed has a crack going from the tip to anywhere in it, it is no longer good. Um, sometimes you'll have a reed that has a little crack down by the thread. That's okay. That's generally okay. So don't be too concerned about that. Um, you'll find that if you're not soaking your reeds enough, um, say, you, say you take the reed out and then you play it um, without having any, any, any water in it, uh, there's a good chance that the reed can crack that way. Okay, so that's probably the number one way that reeds crack is if, they, if you're playing on an unsoaked reed. So be sure to soak them long enough. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the reed I was working at before. So we heard the crow. So now I'll tell you what, what, I, what I'm hearing in the crow. Um, now just as a, as a note, um, I have my, a reed knife here, and I'm going to do some knife adjustments on the reed. If you're a beginner, please don't feel like you have to be be doing knife adjustments. Um, your teacher will likely know how to do this. Um, this is sort of for more advanced students who either don't have a teacher who's familiar with um, reeds or if you just have a curious nature like I did. So if you do have, if you are using a reed knife, you, you know, be care very careful. They, they should be very, very sharp. If they're not, you need, need to sharpen it. Um, so when you're dealing with any sort of um, dangerous tool, take very take very good uh, care that you're being safe with it, okay? So, let me walk you through what I hear on this read. Okay, so the initial crow, it comes out fa fairly soft. Okay, so we have a nice pianissimo peep, which is something that I'm personally looking for. Um, and it's crowing around the sea, um, and then as I blow more air into it, it's becoming a little bit more, uh, a little bit more raucous and sort of, um, for lack of a better word, 
kind of ugly, okay? So it has this like gritty sound to it. Okay, so, um, so I, I personally want to get rid of that. So if I blow really hard. So there's a few steps that you have to take to do this, okay? So we don't want to make the reed overly difficult to play on. So anytime we clip the reed, anytime we make it shorter, it's going to become harder to blow into, okay? So this is a very big, this is a balancing game, if you will, okay? So in order to get the pitch up a little bit, we need to make the reed shorter, okay? So how do we do that? We, we take our scissors. Uh, you may have a cutting block. Uh, I like the scissors because they're easy on the go, okay? But it has to be very sharp scissors. Um, I find that these, these are Fiskars. They work well. Uh, I'm just going to clip the tip off a little bit. Again, this is going to, and I'm just, you may have seen me just do that. I didn't even get the reed because I'm going for such a little amount of reed taken off. The less, the better. Okay. Okay, so now we're, we're at a C, and that, that lower sound is gone. And we have an octave, okay? So that's ultimately what we're looking for, but it's a little bit hard to blow. So let me just, we're going to try this in the oboe. Okay, so you notice that the sound doesn't come out very easily. Okay, and it's a little, it's a little bit loud. Okay, so this is what we call response of the reed. So how easily the reed articulates, how easily it gets those notes out in a, in a soft way. Okay, so when we're dealing with, uh, when we want more response to the reed, we're going to be working on the tip of the reed. Okay, so the heart of this reed, um, which is right behind the tip, we'll give you a close up of these different sections of the reed. But we have the tip, the heart, and then the windows of the reed. So right now, if I'm working on response, I'm dealing with the tip of the reed. Okay, so I have a plaque. Um, if you don't know what these things are, don't don't concern yourself. This is if if you have if you're familiar with this and you're just looking for a little bit of um, more information. So you insert the plaque between the two blades of the reed, and this gives you a good idea of the the double reed in general. Okay, so we have two different reeds that are vibrating against each other. Okay, so now we're dealing with the tip, and all I'm going to do is thin the very, very tip of the reed, okay? So with my reed knife, I'm at the very tip of the reed, towards, towards the corners of the reeds, never working in the center. And I'm just taking such a small amount off. It might look like I'm taking a lot off, but I'm not pushing down on the knife at all. Now let me, I'll crow this and it'll give you an idea of what I did. And I'm always going off the plaque of the reed. Okay, so that free, seemed to free the reed up a lot for me. Um, it made it a little bit easier, so the crow's coming out sooner. Okay, but it did drop the pitch. You may pick up on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to overlap the blades a little bit. So what do I mean when I say overlap the blades? I'm pushing the top blade to the right, bottom blade to the to the left. So when I'm keeping the reed like that, I'm just basically in regular playing position, and I'm, that's telling me a lot about the response of the reed. Okay, so. I'm just going to try it in the instrument. So I'm just testing how, how responsive the reed's going to be at that point. So it's a lot, it's getting its way um, to being a good reed. Um, we can go into details, a lot more details about what I would personally do to this reed. Uh, I would take more out of the windows, so it would, draw, it would make the, um, the tone a lot more substantial. Um, but ultimately, right now, this is a working reed that you could play on very easily. So just to recap, what we've talked about is make sure that the reed is crowing at C. Okay? And um, if it's too hard, you can take a little bit off the tip of the reed. Um, if it's, if, actually, if it's too easy, if you clip the tip, that will make, make the reed have a little bit more resistance, which might help.